Good morning and good afternoon. I'm Janet Brenneman, and I'm grateful as always to be here with you, and especially for Fran McNeil at the piano and Doug Garrett operating the sound system. I want to read a familiar text, though we probably don't reflect on it so often. I'd like to read from Ezekiel 37, verses 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, this is Ezekiel writing, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, and, O mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you forth back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. I will never do justice to this whole passage, but it makes me think. I have dry skin. I rub lots of lotion on my face, my arms, my legs, but I've never really wondered or thought to wonder what dry bones would be like, or envisioned many dry bones spread out in a valley so where did those bones come from? Oh, I forgot, this is a vision. But visions rattle around in our heads sometimes, especially if they were dry bones. Dry bones. Does that rattle? Can you hear it? I asked Wes to get me some wooden sticks to rattle, and this is what he came up with. He's creative, right? Dry bones, this is the most well-known of Ezekiel's visions. But who likes to think of dry bones scattered over a valley floor? They were very many. I wonder, like, knee-deep? Was it hard to walk through them? Would you wonder whose bones are these? Or how long have they been here? That's right, this was just a vision but dreams and visions feel 
pretty real sometimes. Ezekiel, prophesying in the sixth century BC, reports that he was brought out by the Spirit of the Lord and sat down in the middle of a valley of very many, very dry bones, as he says. Could he walk around on them? Could he step on them? Were they ankle deep, knee deep? Were they connected to each other? Like the song and the melody running through our heads, dem bones, dem domes, dem dry bones, toe bone connected to the foot bone, foot bone connected to the heel bone, heel bone connected to the ankle bone. Now hear the word of the Lord. The vision begins. It's just a vision, remember? As do all four visions in Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me. In contrast to the other speeches and prophecies throughout the book, where he begins, the word of the Lord came to me. I wonder if the hand of the Lord on him, was it heavy? Did it feel overpowering? Or did it feel like a tender embrace? You can imagine. Jerusalem had fallen to Nebuchadnezzar. But 10 years before that, Ezekiel, who was both priest and prophet, had been taken into exile along with other prominent Judahites. So in today's text, the first words are, the hand of the Lord came upon me. And Ezekiel is taken in his vision out by the spirit into the valley full of very dry bones. In Ezekiel's time, to touch dead bones would have been to desecrate oneself and remain unclean for seven days. But as we said, this is a vision and God commands Ezekiel to prophesy to the very many, very dry bones that fill the valley. Demand that they hear the word of the Lord and then announce to them that the bones would live again and be bound bone to bone. Breath will come into them and they will live. And so he did. And the bones lived and got up. Maybe this passage feels all too appropriate for our context too. In our nation and our planet, for us personally, how shall we then breathe and live well? So yes, here is the invitation to grace and transformation, even in the midst of the moral and spiritual limitations we face at every level of life. Can we grab onto this grace and how and be transformed? Dry bones dancing play with our imagination. In the midst of our journey toward our own death someday, the promise of resurrection dances before us. We are challenged to expect the unexpected. As I ponder Ezekiel's dry bones vision, I understand that it's about the fears and the hopes of the nation of Judah. Will Judah, whose leaders are exiled in Babylon, ever rise again? Will Jerusalem, the city of God, be restored or remain in ruins? But if it's just a hopeful story of and for a bygone era, then why bother to read and reread it? It's also about the state of Christendom in our own planet today, about our nation and the nations of the world, led often by leaders who place financial gain and national and personal reputation ahead of the wisdom of the prophets and the well-being of its most vulnerable citizens and immigrants. Where there is much violence and destabilization we might ask, will our nation 
as we have known it through history, survive. And considering our world's obliviousness to environmental issues and the hopelessness of our most destitute, will our planet and humanity continue? And will Christianity survive? Will the faith of our mothers and fathers breathe deeply and live on? How can we live faithfully in challenging times? Let's pray. Gracious God, may new life arise and break forth through your spirit breathing into our dry bones. Let us have faith and be faithful. May your spirit revive us, energize us, empower us. Let these dry bones live. Gracious God and our Lord Jesus Christ, let our dry bones live. Amen.